To classify the function of a proton or a gene is actually much more difficult than first imagined. The main reason is we don't really know what we mean with function. You can mean function in many different ways. You can mean the function that it's a disease causing genes, you can mean that it's an enzyme to determine what, what type of function it develops, etc. So, or what it interacts with. So there are therefore there's a lot of different databases. And some of them are genome specific, some of them are discovered families of databases or sequences together, etc. And um, uh, these databases together are available in many different places. So the oldest classification functions is the enzymes. Enzymes used to be classified by easy classification. So you had four numbers. And uh, the first one described what type of uh, uh, reaction was happening, it was a transfer or an oxidrate drug to say, so hydrolyze etc. And then described the substrates uh, that it's acted on and then the type of figure in the third figure. So it was really a hierarchical classification. It has survived quite well, but it's still not really described all types of enzymes today. Uh, but still, database exists. So you can go to the enzyme classification, you get a number, and it's quite useful to discover for the proteins that are enzymes. So you have uh, nowadays, you actually have replaced often with the part of the GO, the gene ontology classification, that we'll discuss more later. Here, so it's catalytic activity, it's catalytic activity, you had isomerase, it has an EC number five something, and then you have a geotherm of a number, and you have intramolecular isomerase, it has a subset, etc. So they are coupled between the instant classification of the database. So you have your oxidases, transferases, hydrases, lyases, and isomerases. But today, the EC classification has mainly been replaced by GO. So GO is a way to try to classify biological functions on an individual gene level. So it's called the gene ontology. So it's not a description of the function of the gene, it's a description of how to classify different types of functions. And you have divided the functions into three groups. Biological processes, cellular component, and molecular function. So this is not a function of an organism or a cell, it's a real function of individual genes. So an, a gene can have many different functions. But it, and in particular, it can have both be involved in some biological process, be located in some part of the cell, or have a particular molecular function. So enzymes was a type of molecular functions. So if you go through molecular functions, you have an enzyme, or it can be non-enzyme. And uh, this is better look like that. Uh, so you have, if it's an enzyme, it can be... Uh, here the case, for instance, the interface, it can be... N not an enzyme can be nucleus binding, but it can also be DNA binding. So for, it can be, if it's a DNA held case, it is both an uh, enzyme, because it's otherwise DNA, but it's also in part of DNA binding process. So, it's, so it, they are, and it's not a straight hierarchical classification, it's more like a web of interactions that, that describe the classifications. And similar with metabolic processes, where you have, uh, uh, you have a protein that can be involved in replication or in DNA packing, and if the replication can be DNA dependent or not DNA dependent, etc. And the histochemical case can do many things, and they can be involved in mitochondrial and or in nuclear DNA, etc. So this is a way to describe different DNA helicases. And of course, the protein can be have a certain location. So if it's a nuclear DNA helicase, it can be in the nucleus and not in the cytoplasm. And if the nucleus, it can be the nucleus or nucleolus or nuclear membrane, it's a nucleoplasm, and it can be part of the replication form. So you really have hierarchical classification of cellular components. And of course, some proteins exist in several of these, but it's not always, uh, well, most many exist in only one. And again, this should be reminded that this is not a description of what a protein does, this gives them how what functions a protein could have or a gene could have. Finally, there's also another protein that are expressed in databases as far as where a gene is expressed, when it's expressed. So there is, for instance, pride for protein expression and gene expression, or gene expression atlas for, for gene expressions. So they have a lot of databases for that. So that is very important, of course, if the protein is not expressed, not very function. And many proteins or genes are only expressed at certain times in the history of a cell. 